Hi, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm Shen Yao. Uh, I'm the COO and also the co-founder of uh, LWE. Um, we are a logistic company focusing on cross-border. We help a lot of e-commerce companies to fulfill their services into Southeast Asia and different countries worldwide. So today we are going to share about big data application in logistics. Uh, how do we try to bring value uh, for our customers when doing our logistic services? Uh, especially, especially in last mile delivery and cross-border in the Southeast Asia region. Uh, I must say that I'm not really an expert in big data, but I'm a, very, I'm a very big user of big data at the moment. I'm a graduate in IT. So when we first started this company, we have to compete with a lot of international players in the market. Uh, how, are we going to, how are we going to compete in the international stage when we first started in Hong Kong and in China? So we develop our own solutions. So we integrate with a lot of different logistic companies worldwide. We have integrated more than 30 different carriers and postal companies. So we collect a lot of data on the services that they deliver for us. And from there, we, we, we continue to improve our system, continue to analyze and see what we can do with it to further improve. So let's go through the borrowing stuff for, uh, for a while first. So big data today, basically, uh, Everybody's talking about it, uh, but if you ask a lot of people, they can't really give you a, a very good description, neither do I. But I think the best way to de describe big data is the three Vs. We talk about high volume, high velocity, and high variety. Okay, so when we talk about volume of data, uh, I remember years ago when we talk about volume, uh, we are looking at structured database, uh, tags. Um, those days we talk about megabyte, gigabyte. But today enterprises easily, they have hundreds of terabytes of data, uh, even up to petabytes. So we collect all this data and then we start to compare. There are different, there are different type of data structures. You talk about tags, talk about sound, talk about images and talk about videos. And time to time, when you try to compare the data to try to make sense, you massage the data, you create additional data. So data volume increases a lot as you go. And when you talk about variety, as I said earlier, those days you only have text. So we only look at structured database. Then we move into XML days. We talk about, we talk about uh, uh, how to exchange data with different, different uh, carriers, how to use API, and how do we store this raw information. And we also have unstructured data like images, videos, so and so forth. And today, when we consume data, it's not like those days. Uh, we, in logistics, those days, when you do track and trace, you can wait for half a day in order to see the tracking. We update data by batches. But today, we want to see data live. You want to be able to see which courier company can go to the ground, deliver your items, and give you a live GPS tracking. The thirst to, to see the data as soon as possible is getting higher and higher as we go. Okay. Next. So once you describe about big data, the first question is, as a user, as a business owner, what can I do with it? So this is a question that I have to take away my IT hat, and now I'm thinking about, how is the big data going to help me? I have so much data in my, my database. So first thing first, I'm a COO, so I have to understand, OK, how do I improve my, my operations efficiency? How, is, how am I going to find out that my guys are making a lot of mistakes, and how can I reduce mistakes? To a certain extent, predict when are they going to make mistakes. And in turn, how is it going to help me to reduce costs? And then we talk about customer experience. So when you talk about service line, courier, it's all about the point where the guy delivered the item to the customer. So my customer will rely on me to see whether my, his customer will be satisfied. Okay? How are we going to make sure that our service is more visible, more transparent? And how are we going to use data? How are we going to preempt our customers in order for us to to provide something more transparent, okay, more predictable for them as well. Then from there, once we keep on fine-tuning using the data and our processes, we try to find new business models. Other than doing just the normal courier delivery, the cross-border stuff that I normally do, what are the additional, st additional stuff can I do? Is there a gap in the market that we try to close? So this is something we continue to look into. Next. Okay, so maybe just give you a little bit of examples of how 
big data is being used in the logistic industries in, in, in different parts of the world. Next. Next. Okay, say for example, Amazon. Amazon tracks, monitors, and secures 1.5 billion items in 200 fulfillment centers. To be exact, more than 214 fulfillment centers in America. So what they do basically is they install all sensors, thousands and millions of sensors across 200 different fulfillment centers. They track the movement. They develop and patented an algorithm in order to predict what is the customer going to buy next. So what they do basically is they will, they will determine which are the items going to be bought by certain item. It's far away from this customer. They will move from one fulfillment center to another. To the extent they will make the driver bring the item in the van, such that whenever the customer log in the order, in minutes of time, they will send the item to the customer. So they, they claim, they call this uh, anticipatory shipping. So they can anticipate what you want. And the moment you want it, they can deliver it to you. Next. FedEx uses active sensors. They have this uh, product they call Sense Aware. So this sensor basically detects uh, the temperature, the humidity, pressure, shock, and light. And they put it together with the goods whenever they transport them. So for high-value items, uh, especially in the medical industry, you have to send your items from one point to another in a temperature control place, say for example. So if your driver is driving the truck, he will not know whether the aircon in the, in, the, in the truck has broken down or not. So the sensor itself basically will detect, monitor the temperature, and whenever there's any issue, it will send direct to the control center. So the control center can react immediately. At the same time, the GPS location will give the customer a peace of mind knowing that at the point of time, where are the, where are the goods being, being transferred to? Okay, next. Okay, this is a bit more interesting. I think some of you probably heard about this before. UPS, they study the delivery patterns of all the drivers, and they use data, they monitor, they come up with different optimized routes for the delivery drivers. Okay, the keyword is optimized, and it's not the shortest route. Okay, in America, the easier turn is to turn right. So if you were to turn left, you have, to go you have to go through the oncoming traffic. So you have to stop your car, okay? And then you have to start and go. And you also have to face the risk of oncoming traffic hitting you. So by turning right, by having a, having a, a route that keep on turning to the right, okay? It might not be the shortest, but it can actually be the fastest. At the same time, you don't have to stop your car for so long. So what happens is, this enables the drivers, right, to help the company to save costs, increase the safety, safety of, uh, of the drivers, Okay, and also to, to improve the delivery timing for UPS parcels. Next. So other than the three examples, there are also other areas in logistics that we, time to time we try to see, we try to explore and see what we can do. Say for example, how am I going to reduce uh, the risk of implementing new items? How am I going to kind of lower my, my downtime during my maintenance? How am I going to use my past data, okay, especially in growing countries, growing areas like Southeast Asia? How are we going to help ourselves to plan more effectively, especially when, especially when we have so many different countries to cover, like Indonesia, Thailand, which is a priority for me right now. So these data, these trends help us to actually do more sounded decisions. Next. So allow me to talk a little bit about LWE. Okay. Uh, next. Next. So in LWB, we specialize in e-commerce logistics and fulfillment. Uh, we started in 2010 in Hong Kong and China. From, from day one, when, you, when we went to Hong Kong, we talked about cross-border deliveries. And we only focus on B2C. So B2C those days is unheard, unheard of in, in, in Malaysia. So we, we work with a lot of uh, European counterparts into, into, uh, in postal networks, in courier companies. We started to develop our own solutions to, 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 to integrate their services and provide services from China to any, any part of the world. Okay? Um, not yet. Okay. So recently, last year, we started to embark into local deliveries. So even though a lot of people, a lot of friends known us as, uh, as uh, the company doing, uh, doing uh, cross-border deliveries. Actually, uh, previously, we have more than 30 years of experience running one of the one of, one of the prominent courier companies in Malaysia. So we have a lot of experience. I used to develop an IT system for them. So once we have developed enough volumes into the area, we try to see what can we do in local delivery, in the last mile delivery scene in Malaysia. So we use a lot of tech. I will explain that a bit later. We also go into warehousing because by just doing delivery, we want to provide more value-added service to customer. How can we help customer from different regions like Japan, from Korea, brand owners, 
to actually use Malaysia as a regional hub for them to distribute their products into entire Southeast Asia. We also provide channel management. Okay, from IT, I go into logistics, and now I'm trying to talk about channel management. So what we do is, some customers, some brand owners, they really want to come into the market, but they have little know-how. They don't know about the culture. So we have friends in, in the region. We have friends in different marketplaces, different partners that we work with. So what we're trying to do is we become the outsource arm for them to help them to market their products into Southeast Asia, help them to manage the e-commerce operations. Next. So all this cannot be done right, by just LW alone. So LW, actually, we have two other subsidiaries. So one is Unixus. Unixus is our IT subsidiary that is developing and providing all the solutions, the mobile apps to support all the entire network's operations. So eTailor Gateway is the channel management company that I just mentioned. So we are the one that actually talk to brand owners, understand the requirements, try to find which are the areas of services that they need. We come out and help them to go into the market. Next. So today, these are the number of countries that we have. We have more than 10 offices in uh, 10 different country, uh, major cities in, in Asia Pacific. Uh, our service coverage, because of the integration, because of the collaboration we have in various partners, we cover more than 200 countries worldwide. Next. Okay, uh, just now I was mentioning about last mile delivery. So last year, we decided to go into last mile delivery in Malaysia. We started in August last year, so exactly one year from, uh, uh, one year already. So we have managed to develop 10 different stations, more than 30 delivery points, uh, all because we have a very strong strong team in IT to help us to develop all the solutions that we need. So all our mobile apps are, are done in-house. We have very strong capabilities to integrate with different working partners. That, that allows us to extend our arms into Malaysia very easily. Next. Okay, so enough about, about LWE. But more importantly is with IT, with our experience, we have, we have experience from the traditional courier, and we also have, have, have ideas from the, from, the new, from the new industry. So how, try, how do we try to combine this? And, and just want to share with you the little things that we learned. Next. So with all the data that we are sending every day, uh, at one point we are sending about 50 to 60,000 parcels uh, into the entire Southeast Asia, but we own zero trucks. Okay, we own zero trucks. So we collect a lot of data. So all the partners that work with us will deliver all these parcels. We put in a lot of requirements in terms of the data that we want. I want to know when did the flight arrive. I want to know when do you clear customs. I want to know when do you do the first delivery until you finish, and why did it fail. So all this information, instead of passing back to the customer directly, we actually keep it inside our system. We massage the data. We analyze them. Okay? So that helps us to look at the trend growing into different countries. Okay? We are able to do strategic planning to expand our network into different countries more effectively. Okay, and more cost efficiently. We also look into resource planning. Resource planning whereby I will know, say for example, for, for, for certain countries, there are certain seasons coming during certain months. So that allows me to plan resources with the airline, okay, obtain more cargo space early, talk to my partner over there in the, in the destination country to allocate more, more, more operation workers to us to make sure that the goods are cleared in time. At the same time, when you do local delivery, you're able to know which are the offices, which are the places that will have a surge in parcels so that we can get even part-timers -time, part to come, come and help us to do the delivery without disrupting the services. Next. Okay. Um, one of the biggest challenges in, uh, in Southeast Asia in terms of doing B2C delivery, especially in Malaysia, uh, when we say courier industry, courier industry is actually a B2B business. We talk about delivery from office to office. Uh, but at the same time, Malaysia, when you talk about e-commerce delivery, delivery to home, we also use courier services. So courier services in Malaysia, actually, they face a very, very challenging task. Likewise with Thailand, likewise with Indonesia. So how can we make things more effectively? I can't be going to a home at 10 o'clock in the morning when nobody's at home. I'm bound to fail. So I'm bound to waste one trip and then what I'm going to do next. So we decided to look into our address data. Okay? We have millions of addresses in the system. Some of them are repeated, some of them are not. So what can we do with them? So we work with, uh, we work with partners to see how we can classify the addresses, whether it is an office, is this a condominium, is it a hotel, or a hospital, okay? Or is this place, uh, in some certain areas in, in KL, say for example, most of the time during the day, nobody's at home. So we know all that. So that allows us to actually prioritize our sorting in our system. So we know that, okay, for this area, we'll schedule the delivery to be late afternoon or even at night. So this area is a commercial area. During the day, there will be a lot of people. Get the guys out early in the morning and get them delivered. So we increase our first delivery success rate. Next. When it comes to doing cross-border, right, 
Custom clearance is always a very big challenge. So you have thousands of items. You, know, you work with marketplaces like Lazada or Shopee, they've got millions of assortments. So from China, from Hong Kong, from Japan, from Korea, into all these countries. So we need to know when exactly or, or when exactly or which country exactly do they have a, a growth in certain trends. So we have to monitor that. That helps us to actually work closer with the custom, custom uh, authorities in different countries to let them know that, okay, these are the stuff that's coming in. Okay, we need to plan certain resources. Certain items require certain permits. Operationally, I can segregate them so that my other items will not get affected. Next. Okay, route optimization. Um, we actually track our guys when they're on the road all the time. So we develop our own mobile apps. So any riders or any drivers that join us, if they don't have a smartphone with a data line, they cannot join us. Okay? They have to provide uh, a relatively good phone. Um, so, so when they're on the road, we actually collect all the GPS points to see how they actually fulfill the delivery for different zones. Some guys, they're very good in what they do. Some guys, they're not. So we compare what's the pattern over there. We find ways to optimize. Whenever we have search in, 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 in deliveries during peak season, we may have to hire part-timers. You, you may not have enough time to teach these people what's the right way to do delivery. So we try to use the historical pattern, try to map out a certain route, let this guy go out and do the deliveries by following what the seniors used to do. That allows us to actually do a very, a very uh, what do you call it, uh, a, more, a, more pre, uh, a more standard delivery in the market. Next. We also monitor hotspots. Uh, Hotspots whereby, what's the concentration of parcels in different, different places? Uh, we also try to see what's the concentration of failure points. Okay? So drivers, when they go out, there's a certain percentage where they will have a failed delivery, say maybe about 20 to 30%, especially for home deliveries. So we try to understand which are the areas where you have a lot of housing addresses. So by, moni by, by monitoring these hotspots, okay, it's either we allocate more resources during search to do the deliveries, or we actually hold these parcels, knowing that there's a very high chance of uh, first delivery failure. We make phone call first before the guy go out for delivery. So that allows us to achieve a higher success rate and reduce our delivery cost. Okay, next. Okay, so these are just some of the examples that I've just shared. Um, I think a lot of companies, a lot of people, they, when they try to go into to big data, uh, we don't know when is it the right time to do so. Neither, neither did we, uh, but we only know that we have a lot of data. We want to collect as much as we can. We, we try to make sense out of it. But what's important when you try to go into big data, it's important to understand big data actually helps you to, to know where you are going. Okay? It gives you something, a more sounded decision, what you want to do with it. Okay? Because sometimes we just you know, try to pluck some numbers in the air and go somewhere. If you ha you're fortunate enough to actually have some data, share with some friends, that actually helps you to think okay, strategically, what am I going to do next? At the same time, when you are running your stuff, all these data that you have, try to focus on failure points. Why do you fail? Why do your customer buy things, wanted to buy things from you, but they drop out? These are very basic stuff. Then, how are you going to do more? How can you do more with less? Okay? Uh, okay. I think time's up, is it? Yeah, okay. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Anyway, my, 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 my sharing is up to here. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. We have time for one question. So the top question here is, what is your pricing strategy and advantage compared to Post Laju and other courier companies? Can you write me an email? <laughs> okay, when we, when we do our pricing strategy, we do it a bit differently uh, from other courier companies. Uh, we take consideration into the type of stuff that you are sending. Uh, say, for example, how light is your item? What kind of volume you are looking into? What are the hotspots that you go into? We can customize the rates for you. So certain customers, they like to work with us because we understand some of the pain points into different countries, into different regions. This is where we look at the data, we see, okay, for example, if your item is always about 100 grams and you have a high volume of these items, so instead of charging you, say, 500 grams, maybe I start with 250 grams, okay? The other thing is certain areas where you have a higher delivery, higher delivery area, we can actually zone it for you in our system. So that particular zone, maybe I can give you a more competitive rate so that you can push even harder. Okay. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Logistics Worldwide Express, please thank Ng Shen Yao. Thank you.